Okay, so what we're gonna be looking at in this video is how to use uh, Makey Makey and some other bits and pieces, some arcade buttons, um, some cardboard, and scratch on the computer to be able to create um, an interactive display or some talky buttons so that when we press them, they're gonna either give us a sound effect, a piece of music, or some information that's spoken to us. So where we're gonna begin with this one, actually, is just to look at the Makey Makey and understand how uh, this works and what it does. So as we look down on the Makey Makey here, uh, basically what these do, so when they're connected via USB to the computer, uh, they work as basically a USB keyboard, or that's how the computer will see it, um, but a keyboard with very few controls on it. So an up, a down, a left, a right, a space bar, a mouse click, um, and then this bar here we'll talk about in a little bit. There are some extra buttons on the back. You can actually wire into some of these headers on the back and you can uh, have some extra keys if you want to, W, A, S, and D, and some others. But we're just gonna use the basic ones on the front for today. So, um, the way that this little project is gonna work is that we're gonna tell Scratch that um, when, say, we press the space bar, it's going to play uh, a recorded piece of sound. Okay, so what we do to connect this and to use a Makey Makey, we connect the key that we want to something and this one to something else and then when this connection is bridged, it's gonna send a spacebar signal to the computer. So what we can connect that to is something like this, so like an arcade button. Okay, so at this point, we would press this button and it's going to send spacebar signal to the computer. Um, so let's have a look how we would go about doing the coding for this inside Scratch. So uh, now we're in Scratch, what we can do from here, I would normally log into an account and things to save it. But I'm just going to start creating straight off here. Now we don't need any of this. And actually we're not even gonna bother with the preview here. So I really don't need any characters or anything on here. Um, I'll leave the cat and we can put the code on there, but it really does not matter because we're not gonna see this screen. This computer is gonna be hidden away. Um, okay, so all we're gonna need to do then for this is we're gonna need to use an event and then that event is going to trigger a sound. Okay, so before I record my own one, let me just grab this meow just here. Uh, okay, so if I test this on the computer, okay, that works fine. And also with the creation that we just put together here, we just reconnect the button and plug the makey makey into the computer. Okay, so now I should have a space bar Okay, and that works great. Um, so obviously you can connect more of these to different directions uh, and then have different sounds. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. But we're going to put um, into this, instead of that, we're actually gonna go to sounds at the top here, scrap that, and we're going to record our own. That's gonna be in here. Um, so, what this could be if you were doing a particular display about something. We had some students, you'll see on the video actually in the corner, uh, we had some students do um, like museum pieces and then they had buttons that you could come and press and it would talk about the, the thing that you were seeing within the museum, which worked really well. Um, I've seen these done into sort of wall displays um, and other things. So you could be describing lots of things. What I would do is just record some basic just example um, audio here just to just to go in it. So this is button one being pressed. This is button one being pressed. So I don't need that first bit. Okay, we'll just call this one button one. All right, let me record another one. You just pressed button two. You just pressed button two. 
And this was button 3. OK, so I've got my three recorded pieces of audio now, and I'm just going to set this onto three different keys that the uh, Makey Makey has on it. So it's got a space, it's got an up arrow, it's got a down arrow. OK, so those are the three I'm going to have. So we'll have then, let me just click in here and change it to the right one. OK, so we've got... This is button one being pressed. You just pressed button two. And this was button three. Okay, um, so we would choose, I would choose until done, because if you just choose this one, the difference is... And this would... And it doesn't play all the way to the end, so you can keep sort of jamming the button. Um, which may be what you want, depending on what you're doing. You could build like a, a musical instrument like this with different sounds, and the kids could press buttons, and then different sounds that they've recorded could play. So you might want it to be able to do that. It really depends what you're using this for. Um, okay, so at this point, um, that's kind of done. What I'm going to do now is just to test all of these out. So just going to use this, touch the um, earth at the bottom, and it will just... You just pressed button two. So that one's good, and then down. And this was button three. Okay, so what we now need to do is to build all of this into something. So I don't want to wire them all up and then have to take them off again. Um, so we're going to put them inside this cardboard box, um, which I'm going to turn inside out so that it looks a little bit cleaner. And we cut three holes in this just on the laser cutter, but you can jam a pair of scissors in there and it'll work just as well um, for doing that. So what we're going to do, we're going to install our buttons. Okay. This is button one being pressed. Thank you. Right, okay, so we've got the buttons installed. So now, conveniently, um, this has a nice little hole in the back just here, so we can kind of run some wires through this a little bit, through the back. So, a wire up the space bar. Put that one on there. Now, you can get proper wires for connecting to the bottom of these. Um, buttons, which is obviously a lot better for them coming off. Um, we do have some actually over there, but often what I will have the students do is just to get these in place and then just put a blob of glue gun glue just over there. It just kind of stops things moving around. Okay, so that should be everything we need. We're just going to check they're not touching each other anywhere. Um, not the most stable wiring, because as I say, they're not held on by anything apart from just the clip at the moment, but should work for what we need. Helps if I put the USB cable in, doesn't it? All right, so we've got now our completed talky buttons. As I say, this could have a lot more with it and display and other things that, that goes along with it, but we can just test this out. This is button one being pressed. You just pressed button two. And this was button three. 
You just pressed button two. This is button one being pressed. And what we'd usually have the students do is using their Chromebook typically for hours, they would then sort of hide that away somewhere underneath. We've had students that have just had it so they've closed the lid and connected a pair of speakers um, and put that round as well. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it works really nicely and it's a lovely way of just creating really simple um, interactive displays. As I say, we've done this with students seven years old um, up to students 10 and 11. So um, not difficult to do at all. And, uh, and really quite an effective way of making an interactive kind of talky button display thing.